So large language models are prone to hallucination and picking up the right model with the least hallucination is a big task. And for that, there is a new hallucination index to help you. And in this video, we're going to dive deeper into the new LLM hallucination index by Galileo, a company. And this company has created a chart on the list of all the large language models of the most popular ones. And they have ranked them by the hallucination index. Not just that we're going to see the ranking of the model, which of course you can do it yourself, but we are also going to dive deeper into how did they come up with this hallucination index. Everything is available on their website. The link will be in the YouTube description. And, and if you're not familiar with hallucination, I've got a separate video about hallucination, which I'll link it in the YouTube description. Definitely check out. Now let's get into the LLM hallucination index by Galileo. A ranking and evaluation framework for LLM hallucination. Before further ado, I would like to quickly show you the ranking so you know the ranking and then we can discuss more about the other items. What they've done is they have actually done the ranking in three different task type. So we can see the different task type later on in detail. But if you see, obviously GPT-4 is the least hallucinating model in terms of content adherence score. And uh, if you see the list, the best open source model with the least hallucination in terms of context adherence score is Zephyr 7 billion beta. And if you see the other set uh, setup, so you would see like different models, which we'll discuss shortly. Now, there is a lot of hallucination index that has been discussed on the internet recently. There was a very vi popular viral tweet, which everybody kind of appreciated and then figured out that it was particularly only for summarization text. So when you look at hallucination index or when you look at any of these kind of index, one thing that you need to keep in mind is you need to have a little bit of understanding of what went behind in creating those indexes. Otherwise it will be like some random index on the internet, some macroeconomic factor kind of thing. You will never understand, but everybody would start using it. And that is why in this video, I decided that I wanted to spend a little bit of time going over how did they build this index. Before we see how did they build this index, why did they build this index or why did they build another benchmark? According to them, not all the benchmarks are focused on LLM output quality. Not every benchmark is focused on the task type. That means here they are talking about three different task types. One, when you use an LLM for question and answering with RAG, Retrieval Augmented genera uh, Generation. So if you are not familiar with RAG, in simple English, typically when you ask a question from an LLM, it would go to its neural network model weights and then it would come back and give you the answer. But that is one, not currently updated. Second, if you have got a company documents, it is not updated with the company documents because nobody trained your large language model with the company documents. So what do you do? You typically want to take a small chunk of the company document and then add it to the LLM large language model and get that as an output so that the retrieved item from the LLM is augmented and then you're generating the output. And that's exactly what we are doing here that we are doing question and answering with RAG. That means the large language model is not used in silos. It is used along with your company document or any kind of knowledge that is part of RAG retrieval augmented generation. So the three task type that they're talking about here is Q and A with RAG, Q and A without RAG, long form text generation and long form text generation is one place where we have known that LLMs are prone to hallucination. After a certain point, LLMs are going to throw complete crap without any coherence. And that is a big problem in generating long form context or long form text. So three types of tasks that they are discussing Q and A with RAG, Q and A without RAG, long form text generation q a is question and answering so the current benchmarks are not focused on task type and then finally uh, they are not focused on the power of the context which is rag now why is all these things important there is a still a lot of skepticism in the market especially in the enterprise market if you work for any big tech you would know that there is a lot of skepticism in implementing large language model as part of their workflow primarily because llms can hallucinate the hallucinations of llms mean that it could give you factually incorrect answer so the problem is it could give you factually incorrect answer and it could give you um, incoherent answer one it can give you incorrect answer factually incorrect second it can give you incoherent like you know first you are talking about elon musk and suddenly you went and talked about something completely random so incorrect answer and also coherent incoherent answer is incoherent and word i don't know incoherent answer 
So these are like two big problems with LLMs and that is where this company decided to build something called hallucination index, LLM hallucination index. And uh, like we discussed, they have picked three different tasks. If you want to dive deep into the methodology, they have given you that. What they've done is first they've picked up the most important models, like the models that are available, currently more models that people uh, discuss about. They, they, they've promised that they're going to also update uh, this hallucination index quarterly, and then they might also add new models. Anyways, the current list of models that are available, OpenAI, GPT-4, the latest one, um, not the GPT-4 Turbo, GPT-3.5 Turbo, GPT-3.5 Turbo Instruct, Meta, 70 billion, 13 billion, 7 billion, Llama 2 models, Hugging Faces, Zephyr, 7 billion parameter model, beta model. This is built on top of Mistral, 7 billion parameter model using an, using an alignment technique called DPO, direct preference optimization. And then from UAE, we have got the Falcon, 40 billion parameter model, and the most famous at this point, the Mistral, 7 billion Instruct, we have got Mosaic ML 7 billion parameter model. So if you see this thing, they've got models of variety of sizes, closed model, open source models, or open models, and all these models. Now they selected the task type, three task type, question and answering with RAG, question and answering without RAG, and long form text generation. And this is all, as you can see, enterprise focus. In enterprise, RAG is a very, very important aspect because you're not going to use LLM just to ask, what is the capital of New Delhi? Of course, you might do that, but most importantly, you want LLMs to answer questions about your business for your internal customers as employees, your external customers who are actually the end customers. Now, for them to build this hallucination index, they look at the LLM performance by leveraging seven popular data set across these t different task type. So for a Q and A without RAG, they look at something like where the LLM has to generate a short answer for a question without any context. So that is truthful. Okay, my bad, I shouldn't have clicked it. For that, they have picked truthful QA and trivia QA. Question and answering with RAG, they have picked narrative QA, drop QA, MS Marco, Hotpot QA distractor test. So these are like the, the data sets that they've picked, the benchmark data sets. For long form text generation, they've picked Open Assistant, which was an open source initiative to build a Llama equivalent uh, model with completely permissive license, like uh, the chat GPT level model long back. Even Yannick Kilcher, who's a very popular YouTuber and also research scientist, um, almost kind of led this initiative. So this is the data set collection that they have used. These are the data sets that they are going to use to do this benchmark. And you can see what is this data set being used for. For example, truthful QA is used to measure the bias of large language model in Q&A task. Tri Trivia QA is used to understand the reading comprehension of data set. And you can see all these things. Now, the most important thing is how are they doing the experimentation? So once LLM's task type data sets were selected, experimentation began and this is how they did the experimentation so llms the best the best the best way right now to evaluate an llm is for a human being to sit and read the responses of an llm that's that's the best way i mean the next best way is people use gpt4 people use other things to evaluate it but the best way is human annotated data that's what they've used and then they've tested it uh, across these data sets uh, across these task types and for the evaluation, uh, typically people have been using GPT-4, but what they have done is they have used a technique called chain pull, which is also something that their team has released in the past. So you can go to this paper and then read more about chain pull, but uh, basically chain pull is like a hallucination detection methodology. And they have used that chain pull methodology to detect hallucination in this particular, in these data sets that they have selected. And it is across two different metrics. One is correctedness. That means that it measures whether the response of the LLM is factually correct or not. And it goes from a score uh, to one, like a one means absolutely correct. Anything closer, you can see like an index. So the higher the probability of the response, the better the accuracy is. The lower the probability of the response, that means it's more hallucinating. Second is context adherence, something we, we spoke about. LLMs are prone to hallucination, like it would give you a response like for 1000 tokens. After the 1000 tokens, it might probably start throwing hallucinated crap. So that is context adherence. So these are like the evaluation metrics that they use. And using these metrics, and uh, they came up with this ranking, and uh, you can see, the context adherence score, the context correctness score, and the long form text generation. So when they have RAG, they wanted to use 
context aware and score when you do not have rag then you want to just see if the llm is factually correct or not then you have long form text generation where correctness score is also used now if you see this for question and answering with rag the best closed source model is gpt4 surprisingly they didn't use uh, claude i would have uh, honestly loved to see how claude is doing in long form text generation especially given that claude has got 100k tokens but anyways they don't have claude so they have only the gpt family of models and uh, you have got the zephyr model and you have got the other open source models what is really really, really interesting for me at least personally is GPT 3.5 Turbo is one of the cheapest OpenAI models and it's been used in a lot of SaaS applications. At least like personally, I know a lot of SaaS software as a service application where GPT 3.5 Turbo is being used. But in fact, the open source models like Zephyr 7 billion beta, Llama to 70 billion chat model, Llama to 13 billion chat model beats GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct on LLM question and answering with RAG. So if you are a company, if you're an enterprise where you want to build a RAG solution or a RAG based AI solution, I think it's a no brainer at this point, you pick one of these open source models. Zephyr 70 billion parameter model has scored 0.71 in correctedness, just like few points below the GPT family models. And in fact, it's better than GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct. Mistral 7 billion is below this. Um, once again, I'm not sure about like what kind of benchmark leakage could have contributed in this case. Like that is something that I'm not aware of. For example, I don't know if there is, let's say a truthful QA benchmark leakage as part of Zephyr 7 billion parameter that might have kind of polluted these results. I'm not sure about it, but I think from the look of it, it almost seems like Zephyr 7 billion parameter model could be your best open source, open retrieval augmented generation model. It's not the embedding model, it's for the LLM. So this could be like the best open available model for you in the 7 billion family. In fact, the 70 billion model stays below that. And then you have got the Llama to 13 billion chat model. Then you have got Mistral 7 billion instruct, Llama to 7 billion chat. And then you have got the Falcon 40 billion instruct and then MPT 7 billion from Mosaic ML. Now, if you go to Q&A without drag, and this is where, for example, if you want to have a coding model, if you want to have like, let's say a teacher model, if you want to have like a um, tutor model, anything that does not have to do with rag, then if you were to pick up, I think Llama 2 70 billion chat scores the most um, in terms of correctedness and open models. And then you have got the Zephyr 7 billion beta, then you have got the Llama 2 13 billion chat, and you've got the Mistral 7 billion instruct model. And for long form text generation, Llama 2 70 billion chat is like way, way, way above. Then you've got the GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 3.5 3.5 Turbo Instruct is even below the Llama to 13 billion chat. And then you have got the Zephyr beta almost matching with the GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then you have got the Mistral somewhere at the bottom. So these are the key insights. What GPT 4, uh, the 0613 model is still the most best performing and the least likely to hallucinate for long form text generation. And you have got the GPT models, uh, other models in terms of cost and all these things. But specifically focusing on open models, Meta AI's open source model, uh, the 70 billion chat was on par with GPT-4. You can see almost like 0.83 here. You can see this one is 0.82. If you see uh, Q&A without drag, you can see the Llama 2 70 billion chat and uh, um, Mosaic's uh, MPT 7 billion performed almost poorly here, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. But again, once again, we have the Llama to 17 billion and Zephyr 7 billion beta. And if you pick the with rag, which is something that everybody, I mean, I've, I've been on a lot of consulting calls. Almost everybody wants to know what is the model that least hallucinates. And uh, probably your answer to that question is uh, Zephyr 7 billion beta. If you don't want to use, or if you don't want to completely rely only on open, uh, open AI. So Zephyr 7 billion beta is probably your best bet here. Below that you have got the Llama 2 family, 70 billion and 13 billion. And then you've got the Mistral 7 billion insect model. So overall, this seems like a very, very good initiative by this company called Glelio. So you can, you can go see what they do, but they have uh, given you all the information. Model insights, the methodology, which we just saw, like you can go to the, their GitHub repository and they see the index. And they also have a form somewhere here where you can click and then actually request more models. Like if you want to include more models, you can go click here and then reach out to them and then 
ask for more models that is something that is available also and they've given you like bunch of bloopers here like like typical youtuber you can go see when a model has scored highest when the model has scored the lowest and um, you know you can see hallucination for example uh, you can go see what album did john lennon release before the one that song contain how and uh, gpt4 gave the best response and uh, the worst response is rock and roll that came from like gpt 3.5 turbo and you can see the other examples like the bloopers that they have got but i think overall this is a very interesting aspect like a lot of people that we have a lot of large language models openly available and having like a benchmark that is a um, new one because you know now you will think that it's not more polluted so having a new benchmark especially focused on llm is actually good and uh, i think this is a very good supplementary paper the their their paper on chain pool a highly efficacy method high efficacy method for llm hallucination detection definitely go through the paper and also the methodology and if you want new models reach out to the team i don't know they might they might actually help you i hope this video was helpful to you in understanding how good zephyr 7 billion beta model is but instead of giving you the right answer i wanted to take you through the process of how they built it so you have an idea about the hallucination index and all the things that go inside it see you in another video happy prompting